public housing authorities have been housing families for over 20 years. My wife and I live here in public housing because we're more happy here at this time of our life. Vermont's housing authorities offer affordable housing options to eligible Vermonters. We enjoy the people and the activities that go on around here. For more information, contact your local housing authority. More than just a building, we're part of your community. We want people to stop right on red. We want pedestrians to have the right of way of crosswalk. Hello, um, we're starting this program off at the street department and today as you may notice we're going to be talking about some of our uh, snow plow machinery and how we intend to deal with snow um, this winter and I'm delighted to have with me if you can see him over here Brian Osborne who is head of the street division of the public works department who ultimately has the responsibility for making sure that when the snow comes our streets are going to be as clear as quickly as they possibly can be Brian welcome to the show thank you man okay actually let's get out of here we wanted to start this program off dramatically Okay, we're here on Pine Street. I think many people will recognize the location, and this is the garage where we keep our um, public works equipment. Brian, let's, well, let me, let me recollect an incident that happened to me uh, many years ago. It was actually just after I was elected mayor. It was about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I received a friendly telephone call from one of our constituents who said, you're the new mayor, right? Well, I can't get to work because the uh, street department has uh, blocked me in as a result of their snow plowing. That was the very first call that I, rega that I got uh, regarding problems associated with snow plowing. And since that time, we have gotten many, many more. I think when the snow comes, people expect the city to do as good a job as it possibly can. And I think, in fact, in the last few years, we have been doing an excellent job. And one of the reasons that we have is that we have formed, as most people know, a public works department. And I think as a result of that formation and as a result of the purchase of an enormous amount of new equipment, we are in much better shape than we have ever been uh, to deal with uh, the problems associated with snow. Uh, Brian, why don't we start from zero and, and maybe just tell us uh, in general, how does the city respond when the snow starts to fall? Well, essentially uh, the, the process begins with uh, uh, weather observations that take place uh, several days in advance of the storm. Uh, we track the storm coming in, we'll sit down and we'll uh, line up our strategies of different scenarios that may develop for the storm and plan accordingly. Uh, once the storm uh, gets... Let, let me just even stop you right there. That's a, that's a good way to start. I gather you do more than just listen to the local radio news. What kind of uh, connections do we have with weather prediction agencies? Okay, we have a 24-hour uh, a day, seven days a week uh, weather service that we've contracted it's out of uh, Bedford, Massachusetts Weather Services, and they supply us with uh, weather information 24 hours a day. They'll update the storms. They'll let us know exactly uh, what we're going to expect and, and uh, what we're going to have to deal with. Uh, we also have uh, a cable drop, which ties us into uh, Atlanta, Georgia, the National Weather Channel, and we also have a direct line into the uh, Burlington International Airport Tower. We take advantage of their meteorologists and their radar capabilities. Okay, so in general you're saying we're in pretty good shape, at least in, uh, as humanly possible. I'm sure all these guys also screw up now and then. But Yeah, there's, there's a lot of variables involved in forecasting weather, but uh, 
you know, 99 times out of 100, we know it. We know it's coming, and we have a pretty good idea when. Uh, one time out of 100, you uh, you may get caught, but usually we can respond to that pretty quickly. Okay. So now you've listened to your weather services, and a storm is coming. What happens? Okay. We'll sit down and and we'll we'll develop a, a, a number of different scenarios that may develop and and plan how to uh, accommodate each one. Uh, when the storm is very close, uh, we will begin uh, speaking frequently with the, with the tower at the airport, and they can generally uh, tell us exactly when the storm is going to come into Burlington, what the temperatures are going to be. Uh, at that point, we'll begin bringing people in and have them in the yard here and ready uh, as the storm's coming into Burlington so that we can get out very quickly. Uh, in, in dealing with a snowstorm, uh, timing is, is everything. Uh, you have to be ahead of it. Okay, let's say the snow starts flying at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. What happens? So essentially what we do, uh, depending on what type of storm it was, uh, we would immediately get out on the main drags, the hill sections, uh, main entries and exits in and out of the city, and get down a salt brine to eliminate that bonding of snow and ice to the road, reduce the rate of accidents, and, and get the traffic out of Burlington. Uh, once that has been completed, uh, depending on what the storm was going to do, we'd either go into a, a full-scale plowing operation, or if it was a light storm, uh, the salt uh, may take care of all of it for us, and we may not have to deal with it any further. Uh, but the, the important thing at that time of day is to get the traffic out of the city and get the roads open so that we can, we can deal with it a little more effectively without all the cars in our way. Okay. If it's an average-type storm, when do the crews really start going full blast and trying to clean the streets and get rid of get the snow uh, off the streets? Okay. Generally, we will we will fully engage our plowing operation at about two or three inches. Uh, now, human resources becomes a, a big factor in a storm. If it's a situation where we can where we can sit on it a little bit and let it let it develop and hold our crews out of it and then bring them in at a later time. Uh, we'd certainly do that. Uh, some of these storms go on, as you know, for 24, 30, 48 hours, and it's very important to conserve our resources. But generally, we will begin conserving plowing. Conserving your resources, I don't know if the viewers mean that. You're talking mostly about human resources human and, and the fact, yes. I mean, one of the points that I think we want to make, as I'm sure most viewers understand, that running these machines, whether they're sidewalk machines or the street machines, in bitter cold weather with snow all over the place is not an easy job. And we demand a lot of of our workers who, who do that, but obviously there is a limit to their endurance. How long might we ask the people to stay out? Well, normally we, we don't want anyone to work more than an eight hour shift, uh, but more frequently than not, we end up working 12 hours, uh, sometimes more. Uh, when we get past 12 to 16 hours, it becomes a, becomes a decision that if an individual uh, feels that he can continue and we've made an evaluation that he can and remain safe on the roads, we will allow him to do so. Otherwise, he will be rotated out. Someone else will replace him, whether it be uh, uh, a city employee or whether we uh, would take advantage of some of our contract assistance. Okay. All right, I interrupted you, but why don't you continue on your description as, as to what happens when the storm is here? Uh, generally, we uh, will begin to plow at three inches. Uh, our plowing operation consists of about 12 routes. Uh, the first thing that we do is we go out on all the main drags, uh, we open those up, get them cleared, all the primary routes, then the trucks break off into the secondary routes and we'll begin plowing uh, developments and side streets and things like that. Uh, it takes probably six to eight hours to complete the route. Uh, many storms, it, it becomes a requirement to do this a couple of times uh, as necessary. Uh, and if we're if the weather holds out for us and it, and it ends in a timely fashion, uh, we'll come in the following day and we'll clean the storm up. We'll push everything back to the curb and, and make room for uh, parking as well as uh, additional space to store uh, the next snowstorm. In. Well, and how many routes might we be doing simultaneously? How many crews do we have out at the same time? Well, on the, on the streets, uh, primarily we're dealing with 12 different routes, but under a severe storm condition, uh, we would increase the number of routes and therefore reduce the time it takes to do each route uh, to deal with heavier accumulations. At times we would be addressing uh, about 18 street routes and seven sidewalk routes. Okay. Um, other than to say that I have detected, I think some of the polls that we have done in the last year have detected uh, people's perception that we are now doing, I think, a better job than we've ever done before. Uh, 
Do you want to add anything to that before we maybe take a look at some of the machinery that we have? Well, I think that's a, I think that's a good point. Um, we ran a study uh, that was conducted by uh, the University of Vermont. It was an independent study which covered about 300 citizens. And the consensus was uh, that from a public perception standpoint, the, uh, the quality of snow removal uh, increased. We had uh, about 78% of the people uh, that felt that the, that the program was at least good or excellent, as where uh, uh, the majority of the people uh, in previous years, uh, through studies that were done at that point, uh, felt that at best it was, it was fair. I mean, I think the truth is you're not going to please all of the people all of the time, and I think sometimes people just don't understand what's involved. And the calls come in, well, why wasn't my street done, and so forth and so on. But I do think that the vast majority of the people understand the difficulty of dealing with the many, many miles of streets and sidewalks that we have, and I think are perceiving that we're doing a good job. Clark, what, what do you think about uh, taking a little walk around here and, and sure. introducing some of the machinery that we have for the people? All right, we have two sidewalk vehicles here. What is this about? Well, the machine here is a, a, a trot-mounted uh, bombardier. Uh, it's a very powerful machine. We own two of these. Uh, we typically put them in areas uh, where we get a lot of drifting, where we have to move a lot of snow. Uh, we've had these for uh, a few years. They're a very reliable machine, uh, and they do a, a super job for us. Uh, the machine next to it, uh, this is... And what you can do is fit the front of it with the equipment that you want. So you're looking at the same machine here, which has different uh, equipment. That's correct. This particular machine will take uh, a V-plow, as you see on it, or a straight blade plow, uh, depending on the application of the machine, where we're using it, and what we want to accomplish with it. Uh, the machine next to it is a four-wheel drive articulating trackless sidewalk machine. Uh, we recently purchased two of these. These are extremely uh, versatile machine. Uh, they'll take a number of attachments. Uh, what you see on it here is a blower, which we typically use uh, when the snow accu accumulations become very heavy. Uh, we use it to clean out handicap ramps, bus stops, things of that nature. And it's a very useful tool. Uh, primarily, this is a plowing machine. Uh, it, again, it will take a V-plow or a straight blade plow. And it also takes a variety of other attachments, uh, including uh, a sweeper and a mower. And the beauty of this machine is we can get use of from it year-round. It's a 12 month It's a 12 month a year machine, yeah. Okay, Brian, why don't we open the door here? What, uh, let's ask our viewers to imagine with us that we're, we're, we're in here. What's going on? What do, what do we have in here? Okay, this is probably one of the more uh, comfortable machines there are to operate uh, as far as sidewalk vehicles. Um, it's the terrain in Burlington is very rough. Uh, the sidewalk routes typically develop slower than the street routes. It takes anywhere from eight to ten hours to complete a sidewalk route. And, uh, and to put it frankly, the, uh, the people take a, a real pounding in uh, on the sidewalk routes. Uh, but this is probably one of the more comfortable machines that we have. Uh, there are a number of uh, controls within this machine. It's, it's more sophisticated than the older ones. Uh, the operators have to be uh, very well trained on these. Uh, they have a variety of different uh, controls and responsibilities that they need to uh, have a good handle on. And it's, uh, it's not a machine that anyone could get in and run. Uh, it's not as simple as steering it and pressing the gas. It's, there's a lot more to it than that. Is there adequate heating in here? Yeah, there's, there's very good heat in this machine. There are also... Uh, uh, but you know, the installation of radios in our equipment becomes very important uh, during the long nights and when they're out there for 10 to 12 hours. It helps keep them awake, uh, it prevents them from becoming drowsy, and it's, it's something that it certainly has a beneficial effect on on the operator's morale as well. Okay. Um, what we're looking at now is the basic uh, street plowing fleet, a truck fleet that we have acquired over the last few years. Brian, I remember not so many years ago that what we had right down here was almost a museum of antiquated uh, snow plowing equipment. In fact, one of the problems that we had years ago is that the guys were spending half of their time fixing what we had rather than being out on the streets getting rid of snow. And I know that in the uh, last couple of years since Public Works has been reorganized, we have gotten rid of virtually all of the old stuff and we have purchased some of the most sophisticated uh, snowplow equipment uh, available as well as a whole lot of other stuff. Want to chat about that for a moment? 
next door, uh, we used to have 15 uh, plowing vehicles, plowing trucks. Uh, we now only have nine, which we find to be adequate. Uh, we retained five out of the existing fleet and totally restored and rehabilitated them, as well as purchasing uh, four new plow trucks, which you see behind us right here. Uh, where are the four? There's two here, four right here? These are two of them, and there's another one in the back, and one is down at Oak Ledge right now. Okay. So and essentially, uh, an addition that has been made to these trucks is we purchased them uh, with wing plows as opposed to just front plows. And you can see the wing attachment here on this truck. Essentially what this does for us... Why don't you explain uh, to people what a wing plow, what that means? Okay, the wing plow uh, typically rides off to the side of the truck as opposed to a, a plow that affixes to the front, which is the conventional method of plowing. Uh, essentially what we're accomplishing by adding these wings is we're getting about uh, thirty percent more efficiency and clearing capabilities with these trucks. It enables you to clear more snow with less passes and therefore increases your cycle time and it makes the whole operation uh, more efficient. Now uh, we have five of these trucks that are equipped with wings. Uh, we also have two front end loaders uh, that come equipped with plows and wings. And if we could step over here we could take a look inside of the truck. Okay, what we're looking at now is, is the inside of uh, one of the plow trucks. Uh, again, there's a variety of different controls that the operators are responsible uh, for, for operating. You can see here several controls that uh, adjust their plows and their wings and the body of the truck. Um, these are automatic transmissions. They're, they're much easier on the driver. Uh, they have a great deal of uh, responsibility and things on their mind when they're driving, and they really don't need to be bothered with trying to shift the manual transmission and traffic until we've purchased these vehicles with automatic transmissions to try to give them more time to concentrate on um, the issues at hand. Um, down in between the seats here, you can see the uh, uh, the nerve center of uh, the felting operation. Uh, this is a HydroTAC uh, computer simulator which presets the salt rates which we will be dispensing. Uh, salt is uh, the primary de-icer that we use to remove snow from the roads in the early stages of the storm. It's very expensive. It's about $30 a ton and becomes very important to have proper calibration so that we're not putting out more salt than what we need. Fine, my memory is that in the past we didn't have equipment anywhere near that sophisticated and in fact we were spreading too much salt, is that right? Yes, uh, what we had before were, were manually calibrated salters. Uh, many of the trucks uh, could only be calibrated down to 12 to 1500 pounds per two lane mile. Uh, we typically like to salt at either three, five, or 800 pounds per two lane mile, depending on the conditions. Uh, these these boxes are pre-programmed, and it's as simple as selecting a switch to number one, two, or three for the appropriate salt setting uh, that the supervisor uh, informs the operator. So we've managed to to save a great deal of money through salt calibration. Uh, last year. Um, we experienced probably about a 30 to 40 percent reduction in salt usage, and a lot of it's a lot of it's due to, to calibration, and, and some of it is due to just the methods in which it's applied. Okay, what we're seeing here is uh, the spreaders that we're running on all of our trucks. Uh, it's a fairly simple operation. Uh, the salt is loaded into the truck, uh, the tailgate is shipped, and the body is raised slightly, and the salt falls into this spreader box. There are a couple of augers which carry the salt down and they fall onto the spinner, and the augers in the spinner are running at the speed designated by the HydroTAC computer simulator, which we saw inside the cab, and this is where the salt is actually dispensed onto the roadway. Uh, another addition to our de-icing capabilities, uh, if you can see right up here, this white tank is a 75-gallon uh, plastic tank in which we will be filling with liquid calcium. Uh, liquid calcium is a, is a new de-icer that we're going to be using this year. Essentially, it's a, uh, a chemical accelerator. Um, it enhances the ability of salt. Normal rock salt is generally only good to about 20 degrees Fahrenheit, at which point it becomes rather inactive. Uh, the liquid calcium will give us the icing capabilities down to 0 to 5 degrees, and it will also uh, create a situation where we can de-ice faster. Uh, this material is sprayed onto the salt as it's being dispensed. Uh, the operator can control that from inside the cab and turn it on and shut it off when conditions warrant it. Uh, it's very important uh, that we have these de-icing capabilities. Uh, when, when temperatures drop below 20 degrees, they're down around zero, uh, the roads are slippery, uh, 
typically the only approach was to spread sand. Uh, sand is, uh, is a good material to use on the roads if you're out in the country. Uh, if you come into the city of Burlington where we have several combined sewers, uh, the sand poses a big problem to us as far as getting into our sewers and into our treatment plants and has a very abrasive effect on those things and that's, uh, that's one reason why this liquid calcium uh, should work so well for us and it has the ability to be iced down at low temperatures. We have six trucks with liquid calcium capability. Uh, what we're looking at here is a uh, four-wheel drive articulating front-end loader. Uh, we've recently purchased two of these. Uh, they come equipped with front plows as well as wings. Uh, they're an extremely effective plowing machine. Uh, they're very maneuverable, which is uh, essential to have uh, in the tight, narrow streets that are so typical to Burlington. Uh, we generally use these machines in areas such as the Old North End or where there's an abundance of dead-end streets, cul-de-sacs, things of that nature. Uh, they are an extremely maneuverable machine and they work very well. Uh, these machines will also uh, take the standard front-end loader bucket uh, so that we can use this machine year-round and when it's not plowing snow it can be used for uh, all of our construction projects which we become involved in during the summer months. Fine, is it, is it fair to say now that our uh, uh, snow plow equipment situation is in pretty good shape but in terms of the vehicles we state of the art? Yeah, I think uh, all the equipment we have is in very good condition. The, the maintenance division of Public Works uh, is a fine group. Uh, they keep the equipment in tip-top condition. Um, as far as uh, as far as state-of-the-art equipment, I, th I think we we probably have uh, some of the most uh, advanced equipment in the area, uh, and we're certainly taking advantage of that opportunity and, and utilizing it to its fullest potential. Okay, now I gather to run a piece of equipment like that, it takes a bit of training. Yeah, it's there. There are some some. Uh, some easy things to deal with on a machine like this, but again, there are some very difficult aspects as well. Uh, one of the nice things about running a front-end loader is the visibility is so much better. Uh, you can see that uh, up in the cab area, there's a number of uh, windows, and it's very easy for the operator to see the whole picture. However, it, it is a, uh, a heavy piece of equipment. It's, it's not quite as simple to operate as a truck. Uh, it handles much differently on the roadway and it's, it takes a little more uh, finesse and experience to operate a vehicle of this type. Okay, here we have uh, our motor grader. Uh, this machine is run in the business district of Burlington in the downtown areas. Uh, the difference between a, a motor grader and a conventional plow is uh, the motor grader has the ability to apply down pressure to the blade and therefore we get a, a much better scraping effect. Uh, the rest of the plows on our equipment essentially uh, float. The only down pressure is generated by the weight of the plow itself. So this machine is typically used uh, for its scraping capabilities. It keeps the downtown streets uh, very passable where the heavy traffic is. And we also like to use these uh, when we have the opportunity on long main drags such as Main Street, Pearl Street, areas like that where we can go through and keep those main arteries uh, scraped right down as far as we can get them. Brian, when snow comes, we get calls from parents who want to make sure that their sidewalks are cleared to get the kids to school. We get calls from senior citizens around our senior citizen centers who want to make sure that the sidewalks are clear so they can go downtown. Do we have a certain priority routes that we concentrate on in terms of the sidewalk? Yes, uh, we, we plow all 180 miles of the sidewalks in Burlington uh, every storm. And By the way, let me interrupt you to ask you that. Is that unusual? Most communities, do they in fact plow sidewalks? Uh, the, the sense I get is, is no. Uh, in the communities that I've spoken to, uh, several of them do not plow their sidewalks. Many of them uh, rely on uh, citizens uh, to, uh, to remove the snow from their sidewalks. They rely on uh, local ordinances uh, to make sure that the citizens are, are actually removing the snow. But I think in, in the city of Burlington, uh, we have uh, large areas that, that consist mainly of elderly people and it's just not realistic to think that, that uh, something like that would work here and therefore uh, you know we've accepted the responsibility of removing the snow from the 180 miles of sidewalks in Burlington. Uh, we do have uh, specialized routes. Uh, we have elderly routes that are mapped out 
Uh, these routes would typically uh, try to provide a higher level of service, uh, particularly in, in post-storm maintenance. After the storm is over, we try to do more sanding, more scraping of these areas to make it a little easier for the elderly people in Burlington to get uh, to the places that they need to go to on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, the grocery stores and the doctor's offices and, and things like that. Okay, the last piece of equipment that we're going to look at today is this infrared truck, which is, I think, perhaps the most sophisticated piece of equipment uh, that the Public Works Department uh, has. Brian, briefly, do you want to explain what this uh, piece of equipment does? Sure. Uh, this truck primarily does two functions. Uh, one capability, it has a hot box up front where we can actually recycle asphalt. Uh, typically, uh, asphalt plants close in the middle of the winter. We have the ability now to produce hot mix all year round, and we can deal with potholes in the winter and not deal with coal packs, which typically has a very short lifespan. Also, it has an infraredding capability. Uh, this mat is lower to the pavement. It heats up the asphalt. You go in with a rake, and you can reform the asphalt in any manner you want. Uh, we get a lot of use out of this uh, in our snow program in that there are a lot of manholes in Burlington that are above grade, and they pose a real hazard uh, to our equipment as well as our operators. And we can use this infrared mat to go in and to alter the, the grade of the pavement around the manhole covers and to reduce some of that uh, damage and injury to our people and equipment. Okay, I think we're, 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 we're uh, running out of time. I wanted to thank Brian Osborne very much for uh, showing us around the garage here and explaining some of the equipment that we have and some of the processes that we go through. I personally am very proud of, of what the Public Works Department uh, and Brian's crew have done in terms of snow plowing. I think we're making some real gains. I think uh, the guys are motivated, uh, the equipment is there, uh, and we're prepared to deal with the problem. Uh, Brian, if in fact people have questions or concerns during the course of the year, they can call up the Public Works Department, right? Certainly. And uh, you'll get the best answers that they can provide. Thank you very much.